about the situation. So I don't want you to think that you being serious takes away from your ability to be fun. You choose to be fun when you're conscious. When you're unconscious and you think you're fun, you're self-destructive. Do you see the difference? People that are really fun are people that choose to be fun because they themselves are conscious that there are things to be serious about. And if you're aware that they're serious, then you're aware that there's fun. And then if you choose fun, that means you know that you're serious. So you're not abandoning who you are. So the reason why I love asking serious questions is because people will get to know about you. You guys want a connection? I hope there's just be Tony Robbins about it. All right, right? Everybody wants a connection here. What's the way that you guys get a connection? Through acceptance. Without that acceptance, there is no connection, which means that you are inherently having these narcissistic flings and you stay the same, which means that you're living the Groundhog's Day, but you're trapped in it opposed to learning from it. And by the way, guess what? You can see if people are conscious or not, because believe me, would you like to have sex with an unconscious woman who's like, this is fun, I'm not thinking about anything, I am pain ridden and coping with all of my self-destructive behaviors and I'm going to use you so that I don't have to think another day. No guy would sign up for that. There isn't a guy that I know that would say, yeah, yeah get me there. Look, okay, I don't care. No, th that's another unconscious guy. And if you see that you're that unconscious, you're gonna feel like you have no respect for yourself. And if you have no respect for yourself, well, where's your confidence? Where's your mojo? Where's your capacity? Where's your integrity? You're broke. You, you, you know you suck. Because you don't have, you don't stand for anything. And so I realized that just by asking the serious questions, I was able to learn so much about other people. And even more so, I was able to learn so much about myself. And the best part is, I was able to also have fun doing it because I did not reject the fact that I am serious. Going back to the thing in high school, in middle school, wherever the fuck you guys were, there were the people that have fun who were unconscious who just seemed to win all the time. But then there were the burdened, younger, more emotionally intelligent, sensitive kids that never made it. And the reason why they never made it was because unconsciousness was rewarded in a system that rewards unconsciousness. Because if you've ever been in school and you're conscious, you drop out. And I realized that at a young age. Because I had parents that said, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Well, go to Paris, fuck the girl, and, and, and wear your bullshit ass loafers and a convertible? Start thinking. And you're like, oh, oh, oh shit, oh, reality. Or else I'm gonna stay in the same damn day until eventually you just kill yourself. That's the thing about Groundhog's Day. He had the luxury of killing himself every day. You guys don't have that luxury. That's the only difference about the story. You don't get the luxury of dying that he did to realize that you can't escape it. And that's something interesting. Yeah, you can't escape it. You can't. Or maybe even death won't allow you to escape it. Now that's even frightening, right? But you won't know until you're dead. But let's not go there because I can't answer those questions. Um, Whew. So there's something very interesting here, and it's like, well, it's a great way to already indicate that you're already willing to ask those questions to yourself to somebody else. And so immediately, what are some of the questions that you could ask, right? I love it, and I always start off with this one. Why? Because I hate idealizing women, and I'm a very sexual person, so let's get it out of the park. And I want you to know this, because there's, uh, and I want to share this with you, Isaac, is that particularly with the girls that you want to sleep with, you might not ask that question. And with the girls that you want, with, with the girls that you want to sleep with, that you want to bring home to mom and dad, you might not ask these questions and that may be the split that doesn't allow you to actually realize that this is who you are, right? How do you know you're a very sexual person? Well, go ahead and look at your behavior. <laughs> very, very simple. Just look at your behavior and consider it. Now, how important is it? Is it something you should talk about on the first date or the sixth date? It's really fucked up and I've met people that do this, that when they meet the girl that they like, they're like, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take her to Disneyland first and then we're gonna fuck. And you're like, dude, you do one night stands with girls in a bathroom that you don't even know their last name. Be honest with yourself, be honest with her. Why are you hiding this from her? If you're hiding this from her, imagine what she's hiding from you. You'll be throwing up. And by the way, nine out of 10 times, they're hiding something from them too. And so then we're like, we can't run, I'm stuck in hell. What do you think hell is? A loop until you figure out the emotion and release the emotion, find your self-worth and cast yourself out. Lucifer, the show Lucifer did a really good job of describing hell because Neil Gaiman wrote it. And Neil Gaiman is, is a Kabbalistic Jew. So just kind of like interesting. Um, so the, one of the first questions I usually like to ask is- Neil, Neil Gaiman's a man, I, 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 but I want to ask a question. Neil Gaiman's great. I read The Sandman. Great book. Wonderful. Yeah. 
But uh, I had another question. Um, so that so basically, ask the serious questions. Your whatever is important to you, and then you're saying you're suggesting for yourself and maybe for me also. Uh, talk about your sexual history. I mean, that's obviously difficult. You know, uh, I don't. Not that I don't do it. I, I talk about it. But again, you're right. Like 15, 16, I don't talk about it right away. And it probably comes back and bites me in the ass. But I don't know. Yeah, I guess uh, I want to show somebody another side of me first before they know that. Absolutely. Don't let them idealize you, right? Like we all think that we need to be the black tea, Rolls Royce driving, Rolex wearing, fucking clean haircut, seven figure making. Like, no, no, you don't. You just need to be honest. And you need to be connected to the things that you are in order to be attractive. That's it. That's it. And it's like, well, then what am I chasing? I don't know. We're not going to get into that today. So, but there's something that I do really like that you were, you were like, oh shit, this is clicking right now. And it's that you are hiding the thing that is most important to you. And do you know why your sexual history is the way it is based off our personal conversation? Because you lack connection. So you look for it in variety, which is what we spoke about last time. You're, under, you're, under, you're denying the fact that you need connection. And the reason why you don't have connection is because there's no acceptance. They're not fucking you. They're fucking a version of you that suits their needs. And they're using you as you're using them. Ugh, right? You feel gross. And it's like, I'm going to keep doing it until I get it right. That's what an insane person would do. The same thing, expecting different results. It's like, okay, well, shit, maybe I should start being an adult now and start bringing out the parts of me forward that this is true. And I'll explain a little bit how this works. And it's like, well, why? I want to see if she has a relationship with it too. I hate virgins that weaponize their sex. And I hate whores that run away from it when they have an opportunity to do good. I'm like, brother, fucking Jesus' girlfriend was a whore. Joshua's wife was a courtesan. Like, I don't know what to tell you. It does not detract from their value. What detracts from a person's value is a lack of ownership, a lack of acceptance, and their inability to understand where their self-worth comes from. You need to have a relationship with these things, not exploit these things. Like, it's, it's a ridiculous notion that, that sex needs to be pedestalized or demonized. And I think that that already shows you that there's a, there's a fear here. If it creates such a massive split, then there's a fear. So anything that's going to be cheap is something we're not going to appreciate. We like things of value. And it's all relative based off of that person. So the reason why asking serious questions is so important is because I want connection. What well, before I want a connection, oh brother, the body, the numbers were high. They were fucking high. Because the second I start wanting connection, I started watching people in front of me walk away, going, you're weird. And I'd have to fucking work through that. I would have women shut down and go, why are you asking me these question, this question? And it's like, well, um, <laughs> because I want a connection. And at first, that's what it sounded like the first time I said it. And she's like, well, what does that have to do with the connection? It's like, well, because this is a true part of me. This is part of who I am. And I don't want you to idealize me. I have enough of that. You know, I'm sure you probably think I'm your father, but I'll suit all of your needs. And oh my God, you're unconscious. I would have slept with you if I didn't ask you this question. And then now your dick is like, oh, thank God. Fuck it. We're not running through this rodeo again. And then you start to have all of these emotions come up to the surface. But then that's okay because we're going to be here to address those things. So one of the most important questions I like to ask, and I like to ask it as soon as possible, sexual history and relationship with their sexuality. I, I like to see if they know what they want and what they need. So that's a very good thing to have as like a preface for asking serious questions. Number one, you could see if they're conscious or not. I am done with people weaponizing their virtue in the name of unconsciousness. Some people are not brave. Some people are not good. They've never done a good deed in their life. They've been put in a fucking cottage and never been exposed to anything. You guys want to, the other thing about women that scares men so much in the 21st century is because now they have more options to be evil. And it looks just like men have. Women didn't have that many options to be evil other than being a whore. Okay? Now they could be full-blown evil. And we're like, oh my God, women these days. It's like, no, that's always been women. They just have more options to be evil. And it's like, oh, wow, this is so much better now. Let me start asking real questions because I'm done dating the sat Satan herself or, or Satan himself, depending on what side of the party you're on. And I, I kind of just notice it's like we need people that are aware of their own humanity opposed to the people that reject that humanity because then when humanity comes out in you, they will reject it in you. There will be no building here. And, and I notice that what is the thing that men have that women are pulled towards? Stability and security and the ability to provide from that stability and security. So not just only to be a tree, but to have branches to reach out and to have fruit that yield, yield substance, right? Wisdom. 
and, and, and that's through your connection with your roots and your branches and all of what you are. And it's a very beautiful thing. And so I like to ask sexual history in relationship with sex. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I used to do it. And the reason why I wanted to start doing it was because I did it by accident once. I was uh, 22 years old. And I haven't had sex in a year and a half. And um, I dipped the stick once, but we'll say a year and a half for the sake of the drama. And... Um, she's covered in tattoos. She's a brunette. She's a couple years older than me. And she was just absolutely eye-openingly beautiful. And so I want you guys to write down three things that you're looking for in a character. Honesty, vulnerability, and desire to grow. Um, when, they, when, they have, when they're honest, they can accept you and they will reward honesty. When they're vulnerable, they will be self-aware and they will reward self-awareness and, and understanding of themselves. When there's a desire to grow, they have presence always. Which means that when somebody has a desire to grow, you don't just grow on Tuesdays. You grow every damn day and you look for the opportunities to do stuff. And, and when you have that with a partner, then you have to be always ready to just jump on the boat of growth, right? And sometimes it doesn't always manifest itself in the best way possible. It's like when your friends are going to go to this one trip that you've been manifesting for years in your mind. And then now the trip comes and you're like, oh, well, I have, uh, 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 right? And you're like, no, no, get on it. Why? Because this is what you've been calling for. And if you cannot receive those callings, then you'll never have those callings. So it's always about being just very honest and self-aware and also the desire to grow. These are like really good qualities to look for in somebody because you guys can experience now, you can experience today. When somebody's honest, they can accept you. When somebody's self-aware, they can understand you. And when somebody has a desire to grow, they can be with you for the time being. Because this absurdity behind forever is absurd. I might die next week. This might, I might just be my recordings and then Nathan might have to take over. Who knows, right? But I'm, I don't know, I don't care. I'm, I'm here to show up 100% while I can for all of you guys here at the moment where we are. So sexual history and uh, sexual relationship that they have with themselves. Why? Because I spent <laughs> a year and a half away from it, understanding its value. And what was the thing that I also really appreciated about her? Acceptance. So then I go up to her and I start talking to her, immediate chemistry, and within five minutes of the whole thing, and I was like, okay, you got tattoos, traumatized, somebody killed themselves. And she's like, oh yeah, my dad blew his brains out when, he, when I was 19. I said, wow, so now what, 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 what's the bodies? How many bodies we got? Because you got to start healing, you know? And then she's like, well, okay, 16? And I was like, hmm, 16. She's like, want to make it 17? And, and she looked at me and she's like, oh, you dog, right? Whatever it is. What is it for you? And we're just talking, but being open and accepting the parts of ourselves that we are. And then fucking five minutes later, I already hung out with her. I said, dude, let's get out of here. Let's grab dinner. And she's like, fuck, let's do it. And, and I actually cared so little because I was capitalizing. And this is what a lot of people do is they create distance between their positive interactions. Don't. Let it go. Like a roller coaster. And so then we go to dinner and I order a salad. And I start eating the salad with my hands because that's actually what I like to do. I like to eat with my hands. And she's like, I've never seen a guy so cute. You're like a T-Rex. You're like eating lettuce with your hands. And I was like, I don't know how to eat with a fork or a knife anymore because I actually stopped doing that. Ever since I got as far away as I can from from my Moroccan mother who always says to eat with a fork and a knife and fucking wipe your hands every five minutes. I was like, fuck it, brother, just get dirty and then clean your hands after, right? And so she was liking all of these authentic parts of me and then immediately more heart leads to more heart and more heart to more vulnerability, more understanding and, and it was like something that I did by accident and it was acceptance and I was like, why was this so good? I had such a good connection. It surpassed the year and a half relationship that I had with dogs and a home and, and a fuck around for the whole world to go, look at them, beautiful couple. Nah, dude, I was in love. I was in the zone. I was in life. And by the way, within a series of months, I found not only my purpose, uh, I had a relationship with a friend at the time that I had to help through alcoholism and, and, and serious depression and not only helping him with his alcoholism and depression, getting him a job and increasing his sales by 80%. And I was like, brother, I know what I could do for people. And, and then, of course, that's when, the, that's when the thing stopped. But I realized that I stumbled on this by realizing that nothing about her I idealized. I knew her body count. I knew that people paid her for sex at one point in time. I knew that her father blew her brains out. I knew that her, her tattoos were there to stay. And I just had a connection because we all have that with the people in our life that we don't need, right? And so I realized the action of not idealizing somebody is knowing who they are prior to you idealizing them. So I have a time frame. And I usually say that in 24 hours, I will idealize somebody if I don't get to know the parts of them. And I usually, I, I began to start rationalizing in my recent past about how 
I thought I knew the serious questions, but I never asked the serious questions. I would get the answers that I wanted because I deep down wanted something. You're gonna do it. I just want you to be aware that you're gonna do it in the beginning. But this is how you create connection. And by the way, just so you know, Isaac, between me and you, that that connection stopped me from having frivolous flings. It made me realize that I'm not in control of the connection that comes in my life unless I, I, unless I discover more within myself. And I bring that up and I dig deeper, right? And it's a very simple thing. If you guys look around you and there's nobody there, dig deeper. Don't move out. Dig deeper. Because guess what happened when you were digging deeper and you were involved in the people around you? There she was. Boom. And you're like, well, okay. I guess I'm just going to... I had a very... Go for it. Uh, I had a very similar experience uh, where I think I, I had that real connection. But this was pretty early on um, before... I had an obscene body count that I haven't been embarrassed to talk about. No, no, that's so own it. <laughs> it wasn't a problem for me to, to approach it from the beginning. You know, now it's four or five years later, and I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> good, good, right? But that's you, and you have to consider it, and these things deserve attention. Yeah. And okay, by the way, just so you know this about my client the other day. She was like, I'm so great. I blocked my ex. I'm doing all this personal growth. I'm giving to every environment that you're in. You know what I told her? And I said, he's going to come back. And you're, and you're going to fuck him. And she's like, what? No, I'm not. I love the stuff you're talking about. And I was like, you know why? You're underestimating that you're either going to fuck him or fuck a loser. Because now you've become a monk. You're like, you're, like, you're like denying the fact that you were with him to begin with. And this is something so funny that the things that you invest in, you are more susceptible to than the things that you desire. So I was like, oh no. So if I'm a guy that's always resulting to porn and promiscuity, then I'm going to be more susceptible to porn and promiscuity even when I meet the love of my life. And it's like the same thing happened with her. She's like, I want to be married. I want to have this. I want to have this. I'm like, look, if you don't set appropriate boundaries in your job that allow you to be available to this guy 24-7, then you're going to pick your job when you're married. And I said, and it's not because you don't love him. But it's because you have invested in that other person more than you have invested in this one. And you have done nothing for the new one. And of course, ex-boyfriend emails her, you forgot your keys, could you stop by the house? We know what that means. Lo and behold, she sleeps with a guy and she's like, I feel like shit. I was like, why do you feel like shit? And she's like, well, because I fucked up. I fucked up the whole program. And I was like, you thought the program was about you being perfect? And I was like, no, the program was about you realizing how powerful your desires are and you need to start getting back out there or else you're gonna keep fucking your ex. And I said, but did you guys, uh, did you ask him the serious questions? Yes. Did you like the answers? No. Can he offer you any of your wants and your needs? No. Could he ever you could he ever offer you any of your wants and your needs? Nope. So then what have we learned? That nobody can do that except yourself. And also you may start realizing that if people cannot mirror what you can give yourself, then there's just nothing to talk about. And that was exactly what happened is that she ended up not sleeping with anybody. They, she didn't. But then they came together and slept with each other. And then they had this whole conversation. And, and it was really fascinating because she ended up asking him if she could do any of the new things that she learned for herself. Wife, mother, move on, start doing these things. And he's like, I don't know. And that's and, and so unfortunate. But the guy has erectile dysfunction. And he's already 38. And, and it's rough. And it's like, well, that was her then. She was running low on her egg count, and, 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 the, and the future of the family was deteriorating. He was married to his job, so was she. And she was like realizing that she wasn't judging him. She was accepting the fact that that was her, and she needed to see it again. So it was all for the best. Sometimes the forbidden fruit is the place that you should go. But don't do it twice if you've read the story once. And that means that's consciousness right there. Being conscious that we'll go for the first door that's closed. And so... Asking sexual history and sexual relationship, I usually do it within the first five minutes. If I'm attracted to her, in the first five minutes. Because guess what? Guess what? I am done being attracted to them, asking later, finding out, going to the bathroom, looking in the mirror and going... <sighs> I don't want it because I, I, I associate beauty to virginity and that maybe that's a problem. But anyways, I started growing up and I, I'm driving with this one girl... I'm asking about it. And she's like, well, what are some of the things that you really picked up on me if I was first dating me? I said, I never met anybody more horny. I like that word. You guys can use that. And she goes, why? Well, that's so funny. What made you say that? I said, because I don't know anybody hornier than me. And I was like, well, and then now, now it's a challenge. And then I'm walking her to do it. I said, okay, well, anyways, what's your relationship with sex? I was like, come on, don't give me like the bullshit. I do it, uh, sacred emotions. Like, come on, tell me. I want to know it. Like, what are we working with? Like, I always do upbeat. Because sometimes you'll get, yeah, I have 
threesomes every weekend and you're like, oh my God, when am I invited, right? And by the way, I mean it, like part of me also wants to come to the orgy, but I'm, I'm curious and I won't shut that away. And because I'm accepting the fact that I'm also accepting that. And then on the alternative, sometimes you also have, a, and you start talking about the most serious things and I almost started, started talking about those things. So first is sexual history, relationship with your sex, and then their past relationships. And so this happened with me recently with one of the girls that I honestly, even right now, I'm like, fuck, dude, whoa, that was a really powerful connection. And within the first five minutes, I, when I got her number, she was like, oh, I came out of a relationship seven days ago. And I said, well, tell me all of the relationship trauma when we're on our date and don't wear underwear because she was wearing a dress. So I immediately set my intentions that I'm incredibly sexual. I immediately set my intentions that I'm incredibly serious. And I also made my intentions very clear about I don't want you talking about anything that's not real. And she just started hysterically laughing. And she's like, do you want to know? And by the way, this is after we slept with each other. She's like, you want to know how I knew we were just so right for each other? You could speak about it so openly and I could feel it in your hand. Have you guys ever thought about that? Like, when you look at somebody, you go, there's some majesty in me and that means that there's majesty in you. There's genius in me, so there must be genius in you. There's horny in me, so there must be horny in you. And I realized like living the intentional life and being able to discover that your intention is what leads your life is the whole point of these questions. And they're gonna get asked back to you, your past relationship and your body count. So we could even imagine, imagine our friend Isaac here driving and then she, she answers the question, oh, I only slept with three guys. And then now you're like, oh no! And she's like, what about you? And, and you look at her and you smile and you take a deep breath. <sighs> Don't sugarcoat it. All right, 143. And she's like, what? And you're like, I'm working on it, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. And she goes, well, like, what do you mean you're working on it? And you're like, okay, exactly. Now you should have realized I've been doing a relationship with this before the question got answered and then I would have a real answer because this is a real person. But understand the real nature that created that real answer and that in and of itself is how you create resolution. So 